I'm aware uh, that most of the people attending this program are uh, those who intend to do fellowship. And I believe that the arthroplasty fellowships are one of the most coveted fellowships on uh, this part of the world. I am Weber Bagaria. I work as the director of orthopedics at the Sir H. N. Reliance Foundation Hospital in India. I also represent CCOT as its national delegate. Now, when we look at the arthroplasty fellowship program, there are few fundamental questions. In fact, that's not just for arthroplasty, but for most of uh, uh, fellowship program. Number one question is, why should it be done? Why should you be entering it? Number two is, who should be doing it? When should it be done? What can be expected? Where can we do it? And how can we or he or she get in a good program? Now, why should it be done? And I, I always say that it's not necessary for all people to be specialist. There are people who do all these specialities and they do it very well, perhaps even better than doing uh, what a job that specialist would have done. So when you start, we start as a mixture or melange of trauma, spine, sportsman, joint, even to some extent physio, chiropractic. But as time goes on, as we graduate, uh, our skill set changes from novice to experience and then to eventual mastery. For most people, this would be our career uh, path. If those people who have read the book um, uh, Outliers would know that ultimately being mastered means doing things repeated things repeating to do the same thing again and again till you get right i would also like to quote bruce lee at this stage who said i don't fear a man who uh, who practices thousand kicks but i fear a man who practices one kick thousand times so if you do something repeatedly if you continue doing uh actions and um, uh, surgeries that you are routinely doing then you'll be good at it. You'll be able to reach a level of mastery. One of the uh, fellowship mentors that I had always told me, and I still feel that eventually as you grow, you should taper down to only five surgeries in life. For me, I know that it's a knee replacement, total knee replacement, partial knee replacement, tibial condyle fracture, something that I love, the, the um, hip replacement surgeries, HTO, and LV establer surgery. So it's six for me at this time. But I believe that's a good fundamental goal to reach for those of who, us who want to become a specialist. Now, who should do it? Okay. Now, when we look at a fellowship program, either as a fellowship uh, mentor or if you, the people who come to me, they ask me, am I the right candidate for subspeciality fellowship? So uh, there are a few things that you must look. Do you have a basic qualification? For most people, an MS ortho, DNV ortho, or D ortho is something that is required to get into a fellowship program. The number two, and that's very important, is that you should have an interest in a particular subspeciality. If you do not have an interest in your subspeciality, it will be a futile effort you will do. Uh, it's not necessary that your interest is maintained all the time, but it is important that if it does not interest you, you change the track very early in your career. For example, I, I started with uh, a spine fellowship program in US and um, I did reasonably well in that program and um, in fact I have a publication for OKO and OKU so all kind of cadaveric work I did but I realized early in the course of fellowship that's not what interests me I'm much more interested in doing knees primarily arthroplasty and orthoscopy and that's what I do currently the number two thing number three thing that you need to have that at least you should be good in basic trauma and orthopedic skill set. Don't expect to be a brilliant arthroplasty surgeon unless you have a good skill in trauma and doing basic things because ultimately understanding bones is the key for any orthopedic surgeon. And I think unless you are a good trauma surgeon, you cannot be a good arthroplasty surgeon and definitely not a good revision surgeon. So your skill set as a trauma surgeon is very important and at least a good hands-on knowledge of basic trauma is expected. So if you have passed your MS and your MS exposure for the trauma was inadequate, it's highly recommended that you do a couple of years in a peripheral setup where you get to do lots of hands-on work on trauma. Now, when you talk about subspeciality, 
Sometimes you may not get that subspecialty exposure during your training days, but it is important that you at least have a good theoretical knowledge. You must have read about it so that the fellowship is of good value to you. Otherwise, your year will pass without getting substantial knowledge. If you want to make most of it, you should have at least a good theoretical knowledge of the field. And also, you should have done some amount of research in that particular field because that demonstrates interest. Not only that, it also kind of opens your mind to the fact that uh, this particular fellowship will be useful to you and you will be able to start thinking differently and i think that's important because fellowship is not just a training program it, it is something beyond it is something that you learn for life and one other thing that i would recommend highly is to study career path of the pioneers in that field there will be people who you look up to there are people in scopy there are people in pluses who have done it and they've done it hard way there is no simple ways for most of people who have reached the top so it's not a bad idea to kind of see what they have done read their career path if you get an opportunity to talk to them in person at the conference or some place try to talk and understand what were their mindset what what made them choose it and how did they go about doing things that they do currently now the next question as i said there are five fundamental questions so when when should it be done are you ready to enter the program and i said always say this to everyone there are there is no age for learning there, uh, there, there is i mean anyone at even at the age of 70 80 i think learning should be fun and learning should be done so there are two kind of fellowships program typically and you must understand when and uh, who should do what program so i call that the first phase is your formative fellowship phase this is where your knowledge about that subspecialty is quite limited it should be typically done five years after the orthopedic training. So in Indian scenario, it should be three year post MS or DNB and two year post degree experience, but if, uh, preferably in a place where you get to do lots of hands on. The rigorous work, single minded focus and is, is, is important. So this fellowship is your formative fellowship. So it will be typically one or two fellowships that you do in that subspeciality. Sometimes you can do up to three fellowships in that subspeciality. You should work very hard, very sincere. You should have single minded focus to learn the most work the most in that field of course if you have a good choice location it is icing on the cake so so for me for example when i did my ms from kem uh, i i did my first fellowship in us which is in the spine but not very interested in that but then i later on moved to australia where actually i worked very hard i took calls although it was not mandatory used to go in observe the other surgeons also when they were not doing it so i dedicated my entire two years that i spent in australia rigorously to learn as much as i could do about arthroplasty and of course as i said i chose different different locations i went to adelaide melbourne perth so all of that made me rich not as an arthroplastic surgeon rich not only in money but rich also in experience and that is what the fellowship should be all about the second phase is a rise and shine fellowship when we have got some mastery in our field and you want to kind of cherry pick things then it is a good idea to do short-term fellowship for example at my career i still i mean and i'm i have applied for fellowship if you can believe that so i want to do, learn a direct interior approach for the hip i feel that it's it may be something that should be there in my armamentarium so i would like to go for four to six weeks at some place which are and to someone who is pioneer in direct interior approach i've done so my basic hip skills are good i do a lot of robotic knees and other thing but but if there's one quiver, arrow in the quiver which is missing is direct interior approach so it's not a bad idea to go to those places and at this stage of our life it is it is okay to only go for four to six weeks because that's enough for us to pick up the right thing so so depending on what stage of life you are you do this fellowship and as i said always look at the other side of it also fellowship program should be fun so you should also think of it as a second honeymoon or just going out and chilling out after hectic work here what can be expected of these fellowship program so different programs will give you different experience of course you will always be surgically assisting your surgeon what amount of hands-on cutting or work that you get or what um, level of independence you will get will depend a lot on your supervisor his mindset and a lot also on you on how much competency you have demonstrated to your supervisor 
it will also depend on the kind of setup you are if it's a completely private setup no matter whether you are in india abroad the the learning will always be supervised whereas if you're in a public setup the learning will be independent to a greater extent of course there will be clinical work in terms of opds and um, managing the patient in wards academics again depends on different different uh, setups but most fellowship program will have at least some degree of journal club an academic uh, talk and of course the most amount of learning actually happens on rounds on one to one interaction with mentor uh, of yours and i think that's that's the key thing it's it's much more of an apprentice mentor relationship so so don't think of it as a structured program many of it is unstructured and that's where the key spot is of course you should do a little bit of research when you are there aim to get if you are a six month fellowship two papers and if it's a year long fellowship at least 3 to 4 papers that is there also it's a good opportunity to network with your peers uh, some people i still ashish was my senior and i i still cherish the fact that i have i was working with him when i was at km and we were lifelong bond um, he sent me cases i sent him cases um, uh, if the patient is from that particular area i ask them to straight away go and meet him he does the dicto for me here yeah, so i think it is important to cultivate friends and seniors and juniors uh, who you can talk to i think with all the technology that we have it's easy to be in touch at the same time it is easy to move away from uh, in person relationship so i think fellowship it's it's i think i think it's a very very important and undervalued part of your fellowship program where you create bonds for your life and of course with your own mentor i think lifelong mentorship is important uh, i'll tell you i have I, my first fellowship in spine was 20 years ago as you, as i said it was a spine fellowship but today also when the topmost person of the of the city required any help i i, I kind of uh, call on to him and he kind of obliges and uh, you share difficult cases you take life advices and many times you get so close to your mentors that you can talk about your personal life on where you should settle down who you should marry so i think it 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 is to get a good mentor is i think one of the uh, just like a good wife a good mentor is something that you can cherish for life this is just a simple thing that normally if you because this is about arthroplasty fellowship so these are simple things that you can start with um, most fellowship program will have this this is from the ishq they expect you to start from the surgical approach and then do uh, surgeries at the end with complex case scenarios so during a arthroplasty fellowship this is a typical thing that you should aim and with robotics and different surgical techniques uh, you should be able to kind of uh, manage from very simple to very complex scenarios um they come so so this these fellowship usually have to be 6 months to a year long <clears throat> and depending on what cases you get it you may get some very complex cases in your initial days and very difficult very simple cases in your last days so it's it's quite luck based but this is a rough um uh, curriculum for an arthroplasty fellowship now where can it be done that's one of the most important question because it, the targeted approach is the key so it's different ways to apply for different but categorically there are five different zones you can apply in india you can apply in uk you can apply in australia us and rest of world so strategy for these you have, you have to classify all this into your five category india is of course we live in india we have got some great places to work there are extremely high volume center there are talented surgeons and great teachers however we do suffer from poor communication you write an email most of them get unresponded but don't don't get bogged down by it india is accessible so you can travel to him meet him in person some some of them are very busy and may not be able to respond to email but when you go there persist i think more often than not you succeed um our fellowship program are inconsistent two different fellows in the same program will give you two different stories but that's all right it's a bit of luck but it's also how you perform in that particular program we do have lack of accreditation most fellowship in india are not accredited but that's changing now with dnb muhs and is giving accreditation to these fellowship programs australia i believe is the next easiest option there are no mandatory exam you do have to give english proficiency test the key is to write a good email have research experience and i think more importantly to get best out of this you have to have a surgeon who works both in public and private so typically i have done my fellowships in australia as i can tell you 
in private you assess the surgeon sometimes the surgeon is good enough to actually pay you the assistant fee and in public he lets you do things independently so i think that's a big plus when you do in australia and you get lots of hands on lots of hands on if you have this public and private um surgeon so i think apart from india the australia is the next easy option uk and us are better structured but they need some kind of qualifying exam they are usually not very high paying as compared to australia and there is an intense competition from all across the world however having said that if you really want to move out of india and want to permanently settle i think the us uk and us uh, fellowships are the way forward how to do it how to get into a good program there are seven key points you have to have good communication skill fulfill mandatory criteria the the age has to be right so if i need a fellow for 6 months to a year i don't want someone who is like 40 years old i know he'll not work that hard i would want someone who is in the right age i would look for someone who has got basic knowledge publication in the field so that demonstrate interest of course i also want to see where he has worked in past whether the references are good and sometimes uh, i just i am interested in a person but i don't have time to kind of respond back so a good follow up from the candidate is important to kind of um, ensure that the right candidate meets the right mentor once you get into it it's not over until it's over so how to make best use of opportunity now mentorship can be a bit of tormentorship you may feel that your mentor is tormenting you but i think it's part of learning um, there are challenges where you are just asked to observe it's called a fellowship versus the over the shoulder ship it often happens when you start your thing that you get frustrated that you are not getting to do enough and you are always doing frcs which is forever retracting cutting quatri and suturi uh, and not doing the actual master work but have patience most of good programs when they realize that your fellows are good enough would let the life be passed on so but till then uh, you have to be patient and you have to demonstrate your skill set always look at cherry picking pick up the good things about that fellowship program not every fellowship has got all the thoughts all the things so pick up good uh, points from that make friends for life as i said make friends with your senior junior and most importantly have fun i think unless you have fun the fellowship is i believe uh, a drag so don't let a fellowship program be a drag try to have fun i thank you once again all of you for a kind attention i am available at uh, drbagaria@gmail.com in case any one of you uh, want to get in touch um thank